Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month and so I thought it was the perfect time to do my annual sunscreen testing video. Now skin cancer as well as 90% of skin's premature aging is caused by the sun and can be easily prevented by using sunscreen every day all year round. This is my third annual sunscreen testing video and in my past videos I've gone over uh, why it's important to use sunscreen, how much you need to use to have adequate coverage, how to apply it properly, and how to reapply over makeup. So if you're interested in any of that information, I'm going to put the links to some of them right up here. If you press this little I in the circle, that'll open up and all the videos will be there. I'll also put them in the description box below the video, and that will also contain shoppable links to all the sunscreens that I'm going to show you today. Now there's always a lot of talk about what's the best sunscreen, what's the best kind of sunscreen, but in my mind, the best sunscreen is the one that you will actually actually wear every single day. US sunscreen will have the active ingredients right here. So if you see titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, then that is a mineral sunscreen. If you look in this little box and it says avobenzone, homosalate, octocrylene, that those are chemical sunscreening agents. Now they're both very effective at screening the sun's rays, but unfortunately for me personally, the uh, chemical sunscreens tend to be a little irritating for my skin. So the sunscreens I'm going to show you today are all mineral sunscreens. So I have eight sunscreens that I've tested for this round, starting with the worst and working our way up to the best. The worst one in this round of testing, and so disappointing because I love other things from this brand, is the Mad Hippie Facial SPF. This is an SPF of 30. It retails for $25 for 2.1 ounces. This also contains antioxidants, and it's paraben-free, PABA, petroleum-free, and not tested on animals. Unfortunately, <laughs> this is a super thick, super white paste it doesn't blend or absorb. It sits on the surface, it gets all tangled up in your hair, it flakes off, it balls and pills up. So on its own, it was a crusty, disgusting mess of whiteness. And practically tied for worst was another one of my favorite brands that I was so disappointed in, and that is the Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Face Dry Touch SPF 50. This retails for $12.99 for two ounces. It is free of fragrance, parabens, phthalates, dyes, oils. This has the consistency of like diaper rash cream. It is so thick and so greasy. For something that's supposed to be dry touch, it feels awful. Uh, my face turned bright red on contact and it took a lot of work to rub this in. It's not good around the hairline. It leaves some white streaks and had a really hard shine. It stays white, shiny, and greasy feeling even after the 20 minute dry down. On its own, this was a no-go. I did put makeup on over it and it was very difficult to apply the foundation over this sunscreen. Makeup did cover the white cast, but the shine came through no matter what. It looked thick and cakey and settled into wrinkles right away. Next up is another brand that I love and that I thought when they released a sunscreen, this was going to be the answer to my prayers, and that is the It Cosmetics Anti-Aging Armor SPF 50 Plus. This retails for $38 for one ounce. It contains peptides, niacin, collagen, and antioxidants, and it's free of parabens, sulfates, phthalates, talc, and it's also cruelty free. This is a very lightweight tinted fluid. It spreads really easily over the skin. It doesn't have any problems at the hairline, but it clings to dry skin. It only comes in one color and the shade is an unflattering grayish tan that won't work for most skin tones. It's super shiny and accentuates dryness yet makes the face look oily. It feels tacky even after 20 minutes of dry down. Under makeup, this was an absolute disaster because on its own it started settling into wrinkles within 20 minutes, so imagine what it did when I put makeup on over it. It turns great foundation into bad foundation. It was shiny, patchy, that grayish color came right through the foundation. It causes the foundation that normally doesn't settle into wrinkles and pores to settle into wrinkles and pores. 
It clings to dry patches, it looks thick and cakey, and it gets really, really shiny later in the day, and it makes my makeup wear off faster. So overall, I feel like this was a big, big miss for IT Cosmetics. All right, next up is a brand that's new to me, so I didn't have any expectations of it. This is Pharmacy Green Screen Daily Environmental Protector. This is an SPF 30, it retails for $36, and for 1.7 ounces. It's got antioxidants. It's free of parabens, sulfates, and phthalates. This is a white lotion that liquefies on contact. It does have a really nice glide over the skin and it absorbs quickly. It wasn't sticky or greasy feeling. It had no scent. It leaves the slightest whitish cast to a dewy, luminous finish, and it feels silky to the touch. This one can be worn on its own. The makeup goes on sheerer than normal with some patchiness and breaking up on the surface. It looks fine from a distance, but the makeup does settle into fine lines and pores. It doesn't change the finish of the makeup, but it does get shinier later in the day. It did feel drying and tight though after about four hours, and so overall I wasn't really that happy with it. All right, next up is Kane and Austin Prime and Protect Mattifying Primer. This is an SPF 50. It retails for $56 for 1.5 ounces. It contains green tea, vitamin C, coenzyme Q10, and resveratrol, which are four of my very favorite skincare ingredients. So if you kind of wanted to skip a step in the morning, I was thinking this would be great. This could be your kind of moisturizer, skincare, sunscreen, and primer all in one. This one is also free of parabens, sulfates, and phthalates. This is a tinted sunscreen with a whipped texture. It feels very silicone-y. It feels very soft, velvety, almost powdery going on. It was so easy to apply. There were no problems in or around the hairline or around the eyebrows. The tint does seem a little on the dark side and it gives kind of a golden glow that was okay on me but will be way too dark for people with a lighter skin tone than I have. After 15 minutes it looked shiny and textury and still felt tacky. The makeup went on smooth and evenly and it looked nice to start so it did kind of work as a primer but unfortunately within an hour the makeup was settled into wrinkles and fine lines it felt heavy and slightly drying to wear. It did help the makeup to last a little bit longer, but for the money, it should be way better than it is. All right, you guys, we're finished with the bottom five and moving into the top three. Third from the best is SkinCeuticals Physical Matte UV Defense SPF 50. This is $34 for one ounce. It is mainly silicone and it contains a little bit of jojoba oil, and this is paraben free. This is another tinted sunscreen that has a whipped up texture. Going on, it has kind of a grainy yet silicone-y feel. It glides on easily. It disappears on the skin so that it's not really visible and it leaves a soft matte finish. This is another one that doesn't really set fully. The makeup applies smoothly and evenly over this sunscreen, but it does make the foundation go on slightly sheerer than normal. There was some settling into fine lines and wrinkles with this. It didn't do much for pores or texture. It looked good for about three to four hours and then it became more shiny and started to accentuate texture. So this one really good on its own, but the silicone slip doesn't give me the confidence that it's staying put and it was just okay under makeup. All right, next up is one that should not come as a surprise to anyone who's watched my past two sunscreen videos, and that is the Hydropeptide Solar Defense Non-Tinted SPF 50. This is $48 for 1.7 ounces. It contains antioxidants and hyaluronic acid. This is free of gluten, sulfates, fragrance, and it's certified cruelty-free. Now, in my previous two sunscreen testing videos, the Hydro Peptide Solar Defense Tinted SPF 30 was the winner of both of those. Hydro Peptide did confuse everyone by pulling the sunscreen from the stores that it had been sold at before, changing the packaging, and releasing a new model. So in talking about this, I am gonna kind of compare it back and forth to the SPF 30, since I know a lot of people bought this because of me, use it and love it like I do. This is thicker than the SPF 30 and it's non-tinted. So this is like a standard white cream. It doesn't spread as easily as the SPF 30 or blend in as well. It does leave a slight whitish cast with some unblended streaks 
and it doesn't blend that well around the hairline or around the eyebrows. And it is a little bit shiny to start. Where this one left no white cast because it is tinted, they both have about the same amount of shine. But the reason that this one is in position number two is how it looked when I put on makeup. Oh my God, you guys, is this beautiful under makeup. The makeup applies evenly and easily over the sunscreen with no settling into wrinkles and no settling into pores. The makeup looks smooth and youthful and pores and texture looked diminished. This didn't feel drying at all throughout the day and the makeup wore really well for the entire day. This one does give a little bit more luminosity to the makeup. So then, unlike all the rest that I was like, why bother with the powder? I tried these with the powder makeup as well. There was no balling or pilling, but this one, it did take an absolute ton of makeup. In the end, I did manage to build up uh, some coverage, but it took a lot more time, a lot more effort, and a lot more makeup so once on, it didn't quite have the smoothing effect that it did with that liquid makeup combo and the skin looked a little bit textured. It's very, very different animal from the old hydro peptide. I would wholeheartedly recommend this to people with drier skin because not only did it feel moisturizing and comfortable to wear all day, it made the skin look more dewy, more youthful. And just like there was a tie for the worst of the bunch this year, there's also kind of a tie for the best of the bunch. And the differentiating factor between these two is what your skin type is. So where I was just saying that this one I think will be perfect and fantastic for people with dry skin. There is a new sunscreen that I think is perfect and fantastic for people with normal or oily or combo skin. And that is the Australian Gold Botanical SPF 50 Tinted Face Lotion. It retails for $12.99 for three ounces. This contains red algae, squalane, shea butter, vitamin E, and it's free of parabens, fragrance, sulfates, phthalates, PABA, BPA, alcohol, petrolatum, oil, and it's not tested on animals. This one does have a slight tint, but it goes on sheer. The tint doesn't really seem to affect the color of your skin. It just seems to take away any kind of a white cast. It leaves a low luster, almost matte finish. It doesn't get tangled up in your hairs or your eyebrows. It is not shiny, it's not white, and it's not greasy feeling or looking. It is slightly smoothing on pores and wrinkles. Unfortunately, it does feel slightly drying around my chin when I first put it on. But that feeling does go away really quickly and then it's comfortable for the rest of the day. The makeup goes on well over. It lends a little bit more of a matte finish to the foundation and it does maintain oil control throughout the day. It's slightly stiff and thicker feeling under makeup than I would like, but it actually acts like a primer in that it's a little bit smoothing on the pores and on my ripply skin. It helps the makeup to wear really well throughout the day it doesn't slide around. So under powder makeup, there was no balling or pilling when I applied the powder foundation over it. The makeup goes on like it normally would with the normal amount. It makes my skin look smoother and more matte with this sunscreen. The wear was good and the makeup lasted all day without any oily breakthrough or shine in the T-zone. So, oh my God, you guys, this is so good. And for me, it is the winner and the new champ, especially for people with oilier skin. People with dry skin, I'm afraid that you may hate this, but for the price point, I still feel like you should pick it up and give it a try. If you feel like it's too drying for your face, then I would definitely use it neck, chest, backs of hands. And this one is also water resistant to 80 minutes, which most of the ones that I've tested in the past that were good for the face and were good under the makeup were not water resistant. I actually brought this one to Florida with me on vacation. It was so comfortable to wear. Um, I felt like my face looked normal. I just, I can't say enough about this. Okay, yes, I'm gushing about it. I'm gonna use these like interchangeably, but on days that I'm just wearing sunscreen and nothing else, I'm definitely gonna be going with this one. On days when I want a more matte look, I'm gonna be going with this one. Um, you know, on days when I want my makeup to look absolutely perfect, I'm probably gonna be going with this one. So I just wanted to answer a couple of questions that I know some of my longtime viewers will have, and that is, does the Chanel go on well over either of the two new winners from this year? And the answer, you guys, is yes to both. The foundation that I used to um, test the sunscreens was not my Chanel because I use up a lot of foundation doing this. What I use is another question I know people will ask, 
is a combination of two, which is the Shiseido Synchro Skin and the Smashbox Studio Skin 15 Hour Wear Foundation. The reason that I mixed two together is because I had reviewed these. They were both very, very good foundations that I really love a lot, but neither of them had a good color match for me. But I found just by accident that mixing these two together, I could get like the perfect foundation. So I used the same foundation for every sunscreen in this video, and I applied them all exactly the same with a damp beauty blender. The powder foundation that I used to test the two that I did with the powder was the Bare Minerals Matte. So I'm so happy with the results of this year's sunscreen testing. I feel like I found two awesome sunscreens. So that is my best and worst sunscreen testing video for 2017 for all mineral sunscreens. I hope you guys found the video helpful and informative. And as always, I thank you for your time and really appreciate your watching. So take care everybody and have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.